Well, hello, this is Rochelle and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bit of a longer video um, and you're going to have to listen to my ramblings a little bit longer than usual. Um, so I have a video that I created this little envelope journal in and you can go back into my playlists on this channel and uh, just search for how I made this. It's very easy to make, um, very quick to make and like I said, you don't have to go buy expensive materials. You can just um, use any old envelopes you have if it has a flap um, and you can just create this envelope. I also did the front page in that same video, uh, just showing you how to decorate that and it was lots of fun. For this specific video, I'm using a technique that I learned from Megan Wells. Uh, she is Make Wells on Instagram. Um, and I just love watching her tutorials and her uh, pages come together. So for this specific technique, um, you, you take background colors and in various directions, just uh, put it on with a brush, a dry brush. I didn't clean my brush in between. I just uh, let it be the dry brush and let the colors blend as and how they want it. And then what I'm what I wanted to do is get some orange, but uh, my I didn't shake my paints before. I am using the Americana Deco Art paint, uh, acrylic paints. I didn't shake my paints before, so the both the red and the yellow came out very oily, uh, meaning that they've separated. So I should have shaken them before, and just uh, putting these random little dots or art marks or smushed effects on the page. I didn't want the dimension um, in the height um, to let the paint dry as it came onto the page um, in little blobs. So I did flatten it out with a uh, tissue or a napkin. Once dry, I'm going to draw out these flowers. And what I use is a Fabric Style Multi Mark pen. This pen supposedly writes on any like slick surface cds glass etc etc and it is permanent the specific one you do get the non-permanent ones but i'm using the permanent one in a size m which is a medium nib um, and i'm just drawing very um, non-artistic flowers so just little leaves and flower shapes um, all over my page uh, we're going to be painting in the negative or coloring the negative in one solid color so it doesn't really matter if your drawings are perfect um, you can paint over them if you don't like them very much but uh, i literally just played around with some techniques that i've learned um, and putting in some art marks along the way just dots and little uh, circles etc etc so um, I did want to fill it out a little bit more I didn't quite space my flowers right according to what I wanted um, so I am just putting this filler kind of flower in the back and we'll just call it a Christmas rose or something like that I don't know <laughs> and then just some more leaf shapes um, getting more uh, more of the area covered <laughs> and then like i said just some more branches with leaves using some different shapes and uh, playing around this is what the fun part is it really doesn't have to be artistically correct or um, sketched accurately according to what these flowers actually looks like it should be in just a a hand-drawn <laughs> something that you enjoy and uh, like the way it looks so what I'm gonna, then going to do is I'm going to take the soft sage color also by um, Deco Art Americana and I'm going to use this to fill in my background now for this you want a smaller brush um, to get into the kind of details and in-betweens of the page this is probably the part that takes the longest and I would suggest that you use a, a brush that you don't feel very sorry for just because um, it takes some time and obviously the acrylic paint kind of gets dryish onto this brush meaning that um, it 
not because it's open for so long and not cleaned for so long the acrylic gets into the insides of the brush and uh, does clog it up a bit or fluff it out a bit if you're using a round brush like I am now um, I'm guessing that you could probably prevent this by doing it in stages for me I'm just using a brush that I've used for this technique before so I'm not feeling super sorry for it and it still gives me the amount of detail that I need to get into now um, it doesn't really matter if you go over your black lines because we will be going over them again with that multi mark uh, just to sharpen them up um, you just want the biggest area or the biggest part of it kind of covered in this opaque color so that's part of the reason why I really like these Americana Deco Art paints. Um, any of the Deco Art paints, I've tried the Crofters acrylic one as well, and it's also pretty good. Um, it gives you a very opaque finish um, with just one coat. I mean, I'm not going over and over and over, and it does cover the background sufficiently. Um, so it's very opaque, number one. And then number two, it's got a matte finish. So, uh, you know, drawing over it or writing over it, is not too hard to do it becomes quite easy actually and uh, i just love the colors that they have available it's part of my little shopping trip whenever i go to um, herbert evans to pick up a few of the colors <laughs> in the deco art americana paint range um, my local craft store also stock them and uh, can order them if you have some colors that you need um, Go ask your local craft store uh, and I'm sure they'll find it for you or stock it for you. I know Jim Nets in Pretoria has some, Herbert Evans in Rosebank has some, and then here in Centurion, Cylindis Coffee and Crafts or Crafts and Coffee also stock these um, America pa Americana paints. It's just the variety. If you um, find a color that you need, uh, you should just ask your craft store to get it for you. Um, there's just such a, a, a wide variety of colors that I think space-wise it's not always um, possible to stock them all. So uh, anyways, that's the, the paint I'm using. And like I said, I, what I'm literally doing is just painting in the negative. So the area around the image, making sure that that's all covered with this soft sage color. Um, and it's very therapeutic doing this because uh, like I said it is the part that takes kind of the longest but it really just kind of gets that um, calm peace sense going as you fill in the areas um, and I'm sure you can use a bigger brush on these bigger areas uh, I just like I said quite liked the forgetting about everything else kind of moment that this allowed for me um, and yeah, so just enjoying that. Uh, with regards to the journal, I like that with the envelope effect, you don't need to paste several pages together to get the thickness that you might need. Um, and I like that it's not an expensive material or an expensive art journal. So if you do not like your page or whatever it doesn't feel like you've ruined your entire album I, I've done that one too many times <laughs> where I feel like this one page in the book isn't up to my liking and then I kind of just never work in that journal again and I don't like doing that so this has given me an opportunity to um, just play around and try d new effects and different techniques without feeling too sorry about it or for it uh, I also have recently with the Creative Hobbies Hub Lockdown Book of 21 Days, I have um, taken an old recipe book that was given to me by a friend and done the same. But like I said, then you, then you would need to put several pages together as one page just so that you can get that um, thickness you require to use mixed medias on it, water, etc, etc. So that being filled out, I'm going to be taking that multi mark pen again and just sharpening up these um, outlines, uh, not rocket science, literally just going over the ones that I've already drawn 
And now you see that that background becomes the color of the inside of the flowers. And it's just something that I so much enjoy seeing come, come together. Um, and it's not something that you can necessarily plan out um, in that the, it's kind of a surprise of which colors land where on your little drawing. Uh, I'm not going to talk through the whole of this, you know, trying to draw over what I've already drawn. <laughs> but here's where you can give more details um, if you wanted a sharper edge or a single line, like you'll see with that leaf set there to the top. Um, I You can then draw in the sharp points if you wanted to. That's the other thing. Um, don't think that your journal is a tree. It's not planted. You can turn it around and it oftentimes works easier if you turn it to the sides and turn it around to get your images sketched out without smearing stuff, etc, etc. So I am going to use some of that um, Windsor Newton gold ink just to give some gold glitter to this page in various places like the insides of the um, flower and leaves and maybe some of those circles. The gold of this doesn't really pick up on the camera, but I promise you it's pretty sparkly and shiny and pretty. Uh, you can also use white to accent certain areas of your uh, image. And yeah, it just looks beautiful. I do use my trusted blender, my fingers, <laughs> to make the gold um, just kind of fade into the page. And then just putting some splatters of gold around to finish off the image of this page. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be stamping um, using this Karen Joan stamp set called Blooming. Um, and I wanted a image or a sentiment on this page. Um, and so I think I'm going to be stamping that word bloom on a separate piece of cardstock and then fussy cutting it out and sticking it on and then using one of the sentiments on this stamp set for the smaller stamped piece that I'm going to use the, I think I use stays on ink or VersaClear ink to stamp that on. To emboss, you need to stamp with a embossing ink. If you don't have an embossing ink, you can use any other ink. It just takes a little bit longer. I mean, you have to work a little bit quicker because it dries quicker than this VersaMark sticky ink. So what you do is stamp with a Versamark ink, put over your embossing powder, um, heat set that with a heat tool. You've got to melt the powder physically onto the page. And then after you've melted it on, you then um, can work with it. <laughs> oh goodness, words fail me. So I fussy cut that bloom out and now I am going to be taking the VersaClear ink, which is a beautiful detail ink. Um, if you want to use small details and words and smaller words, it picks up those words nicely. So this uh, sentiment says every flower blooms in its own time. And I've got that bloom with the scrapbook paper that I've fussy cut and stuck down and then using that as my main sentiment for this page. I'm adding my date using that same ink and then calling it a day and a page. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope that you join me again soon here on my channel for more art journaling, Bible journaling and uh, tips and tricks. Bye-bye.